All right, so welcome back everybody. Uh, first of all, I will try to remember to include the past video to where I started this ice maker at the end and down in the description to where you can see how we got to this point right here. But today's video is about doubling the production or capacity of my ice maker. So let me show you what we got here. You know, long story short, I did not have it in the budget to buy a huge commercial ice maker that would hold 150, 200 pounds of ice like this. They were two, $3,000 and up, um, just well out of our budget. Plus we don't need the high capacity that, that they make every day or high production. So what I did was put a ice maker into a deep freezer. And again, I'll include the video showing how we got to this point. And I determined that this isn't quite making enough for us. So I have purchased another ice maker and I'm going to figure out how to mount it to these plates and have two ice makers running into the same deep freezer. So let's get started. All right, so first things first, I'm gonna unplug the freezer and I'm gonna disconnect this other ice maker here so I can uh, wire up a new way. Now that I'm gonna have two ice makers, I don't want it running off the same cord that the freezer is running on. That may be a bit much power consumption for this cord. So I'm gonna make my own cord that plugs in up here just for the ice makers and have the freezer uh, run off its original cord. All right, so I've got the ice maker removed, the wiring disconnected, and long story short, all we were trying to accomplish here, I bought the same exact ice maker, all this stuff will be down in the description if you're curious about this. We're just going to install the new ice maker right here beside the other one, so we can have twice the production. All right, so to accomplish this, I went and bought some aluminum rod from my local hardware store, just some aluminum flat bar and I'm going to bend and make tabs the same way I did here. It'll drop down off of this to mount to this ice maker's tabs. All right, now that all these wires are twisted together, like I said, I'm just gonna solder them up real quick and cover them up. All right, so I have both wiring harnesses hooked up now with my wires labeled, it's all color coded. So now I have bought one of these plugs, I'm gonna make my own extension cord basically. It's got a, uh, a gold side for hot, just your standard silver color and your ground on the bottom. So I'm gonna take both the wires coming from the ice makers that has the hot ground and neutral that I labeled, and I'm gonna hook them up to this, make my own extension cord. Then there's gonna be two wires left coming out of the ice maker that goes to both the water solenoids to kick them off and on to send water up to the ice makers. So pretty straightforward as far as color coding goes. All right, now the next thing to do is to install this so I can figure out where I'm going to take a piece of plastic out of the side like I did here to run my wires and put my drip tube in here for the water. 
I do not want to go through the wall of a freezer like this because there are tubes all through it and you run the risk of puncturing those tubes and releasing toxic freon everywhere. So the best thing that I come up with is notching out the plastic up top. The seal still fits down in it great. I haven't had any issues with that in the last several days that this single ice maker has been running. So that's what I'm gonna do right here. So now you can see what I'm gonna do. I made me a mark to where I can get my tube straight down into this drip tray just like I did here and run my wires out. Like I said, I know it doesn't look professional, but drilling through the side is just not a risk that I'm willing to take. If you watch the last episode where I built this originally, this is the drip tube that comes in and it's a special design to keep it from freezing up and allow water to gravity flow down. Problem is the way I'm having to install this because I'm not drilling through the wall and getting it perfectly into the ice maker drip tray. I took a piece of tubing that comes in the ice maker kit. I'm gonna heat it up and bend it into an elbow. It slides right over the end. Then you can bend it straight down into that ice tray. That way water always makes it in there and does not go into the uh, freezer anywhere. So let me heat this up real quick, bend it into an elbow, and uh, we're about ready to install these, then we'll work on the wiring. So there you go, a flexible elbow now, and you'll see me blowing in it just to keep it puffed out and not cramp in on itself. That is plenty open enough to get water down into that tray. Now once installed, I'll have to do some minor trimming on this, but that's ready to go. All right, looks pretty good. The gasket's sealing like it should. So we can move forward with hooking up uh, the water and the wiring. All right, let me show you what we got going on here. And keep in mind, I am nowhere near done. After this video is over, I am still gonna work out a way on how to secure these tubes and really clean the wiring up. So here is my ice maker extension cord, basically. It's got all the wires coming in from both ice makers and it runs power down to these water solenoids. So if I want to just have the deep freezer going and kill the ice makers, now I can just unplug it. So what I did back here was I tapped into the uh, water after the filter with a brass compression T and went over to both of my water valves that I mounted on this side. Then found the appropriate wiring from each ice maker and ran down to trigger the correct solenoid or correct water valve uh, with the correct line that goes up to the appropriate ice maker. So secured some wiring. Again, there's still a lot of work to do here. Had the freezer running for quite a while. It's back down to zero. If the ice makers are cold enough, as soon as I plug this in, water should come up through both tubes. I can check for leaks, and we're gonna let this run for quite a while and uh, kind of see what we're getting out of both ice makers. All right, I had to step away for a minute. They didn't immediately kick on, but there is water down in the ice maker now. Hard to see. So both of them kicked on, put water in there. So we're going to let this thing run and see what it will produce. All right, y'all. So the ice maker has been running for 12 hours. I let it run overnight. And what I did was put a couple of bins down there in the bottom to catch the ice. So we'll pull those out, measure the ice, and pretty much double it to kind of see what it'll produce in 24 hours. 
All right, so I apologize for the noise outside. We're having a house uh, being built right now, so it's gonna be noisy around here for quite a while. So I've got the ice that it produced last night. We'll go ahead and get a weight on that, then I'll dump the ice out, see how much the container weighs, and deduct it from the total. All right, looks like it's just under four and a half pounds. So let's weigh the container. Point nine. So it looks like we're still right in that three and a half pound range per ice maker in 24 hour period. So again, this, this, this was open yesterday. I did let it run quite a while. The freezer get back down to zero. So it could, could potentially produce a little more. And I've said in the last video, once the freezer fills up with ice, it should get so efficient. It shouldn't cycle much, shouldn't run much. I'm thinking it'll produce a little more. But as of right now, between both ice makers, if we take the 12 hour total and double it, looks like we'll be at seven pounds of ice a day. So right at 50 pounds a week, which is kind of what I was hoping for. I still think it'll get a little better, maybe go a few pounds over 50, but 50 is perfect. For us on the weekend, we typically use 20, maybe 40 pounds at the most uh, whenever we're going out boating. So this is going to be absolutely perfect. It should always outrun us no matter if we do take that second bag out for the weekend. Once this gets filled up with 150 or so pounds of ice, I may take from it a little more. Um, and like I said in the last video, there's always gonna be weekends that we don't use it, that bad weather happens, uh, et cetera. And this thing's gonna continue to fill up. Hopefully it'll outrun me because we don't really pull ice from it during the week. Now, if you pull ice during the week, a commercial ice maker is probably where you wanna be. This just will not produce enough. But this produces almost an eight pound bag of ice a day, a small bag, perfect for our situation. All right, no leaks, no problems. Everything's working just as it should. I also picked up this big ice scoop off of Amazon. I think it's gonna be perfect for getting ice out of here. So now all that's left to do is just let this run a couple of weeks, fill mostly up. It'll take a few weeks to do that. And then we can start taking from it as needed. And uh, down the road, I may test production again once it gets filled up. Like I said, I believe it's gonna be a little more efficient. Maybe we can get up to eight or so pounds a day. Not a whole lot more, but regardless, 50 pounds a week, I think it's gonna be perfect for us. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Don't forget to check out the other video. It has a lot more of me doing the wiring and building. Today was just kind of an update, adding a second ice maker and trying to get production up. I could realistically add even more ice makers in here, but I think two will be perfect for our needs. Thanks for watching.